DIY is too cool for words. I'm so stoked. It is a two for one DIY. Not only are we going to make something that is totally custom to fit your body exactly, but this is a piece that can be worn on the outside of your clothing as a really cool like statement piece accessory or on the inside of your clothing as a really cool functional styling hack. Oh, I can't wait. Oh man, I'm so excited you're here today because this DIY is so functional and so cool and so simple, it's gonna blow your mind. If this is your first video, my name is Orly and this is the DIY designer. I love DIY fashion. I absolutely love teaching you guys how you can customize all the pieces in your wardrobe to be very specific to your own personal style. I also love giving you styling hacks that really let you get the most out of your wardrobe and today is kind of the perfect marriage of those two. I'm super stoked. So what we're gonna do is we are going to create custom fit, to your body, zip up, corsety elastic belts. Oh my God. Not only can you wear this as a belt on the outside of your clothing, instantly taking in unwanted volume or creating structure, creating a polished look on anything that's sort of oversized, but it can also be used underneath your clothing as an incredible styling tool. This like anchor point underneath your clothing that you can use to adjust all the proportions of your clothing to fit you just right. All you're gonna need to do this is elastic. You're gonna need a separating zipper. Zippers stress me out, but separating ones are easy peasy lemon squeezy and anyone can do it no matter how beginner you are, so please don't worry. And then a sewing machine, because we are gonna sew this. And then that's it. All right, here are all my materials. I've got my five inch elastic and my three inch elastic. Now the strength of the elastic on each one is different and we're gonna talk about how you need to cut it accordingly. Here are my zippers. I got this cool kind of rhinestone one for the big five inch and then a regular black on black. Again, uh, separating zipper is the only thing that you need to get. It doesn't matter if it's too long, you can always cut it to size. When you are cutting your elastic to size, it's super important that you actually take each piece of elastic and wrap it around your body. Don't do it based off a of measurement because the tension and the tightness of each elastic is different. Some elastic might be really stiff and it's not gonna wrap as comfortably around your body, so the length will actually be longer. Some is super, super stretchy and so the length will be shorter. So you just really wanna wrap it around your body and cut each one accordingly. Now there's two ways that you guys can attach your zippers. If you're a super, super beginner sewer, you can have your zipper be fully exposed on the outside. It'll look just like this. You'll lay it on the outside, you'll stitch it down, it'll be fully exposed, it'll look great, but it's kind of a simpler way of doing it. If you wanna do quote unquote the right way, it would be like this, where the elastic is folded back and clean finished, and the only thing exposed is the teeth of the zipper. In order to do that, I like to kind of reverse engineer it. So like I fold it the way that I want it. I'll show you it again in a second. This is the way that I actually want it to be, right? This is how I want it. So I look and I say, okay, how would I have to sew it? I fold it back and I go, ah, I would just need to sew it right there. Once I sew it, then I would just fold it backwards and boom, that's how it's supposed to look. So sometimes it can be helpful to kind of lay things down the way you want them to look and then reverse engineer it in your mind. Highly recommend switching out for a zipper foot if you have it and you're also gonna wanna move your needle, boop, right over to the far left or to the far right. This is just gonna let you get really close to the teeth without having your um, presser foot get in the way of the zipper teeth, right? It just lets you get nice and close. And there you go. You can see how nice and clean it looks, so simple. Now, this is when you'll cut your zipper to length. You're gonna cut it for, I don't know, about like an inch longer than you need because we're gonna tuck the edge in. If you have a, a zipper kind of like mine that has like a decorative detail, you are gonna wanna remove it so that you can fold it down comfortably. A normal zipper, you don't have to do that and you'll see it on the next one. I'm gonna show you how I fold it down on this fabric because the black on black is very hard to see. So this is it, right? This is where we're at. I've just done the simple straight stitch. I haven't folded it back. This is where we're at. When I fold it back, it's gonna look like that and it's gonna be nice and clean finished. But this little tail, the you know little one inch tail, I want it to be tucked right there into that. So before you fold it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the little tab and you're gonna fold it back in on itself, up over the top and back around. Now when you fold it back, just like that, it sandwiches it. So not only does it create the clean finished edge that you want, but it sandwiches it. So you fold it back on the back side and then you fold your fabric back over. You're gonna stitch that down. It'll all be nice and clean and that little top piece will be tucked in. 
fold, wrap, stitch. Now it's time to do the other side of the zipper. If you unzipped it and it's in two separate pieces, before you sew, just do yourself a favor and double check that you didn't accidentally pin it upside down or backwards. Just make sure that it's right before you actually sew it into place. I'm gonna show some details on the second one just to reiterate. You could have the zipper fully exposed just like this, which requires a little bit less sewing, but not major. If you do wanna do it, again, the right way, you're gonna fold it, look at how you want it, kind of reverse engineer how would you need to sew it in order for it to look like that very simple. Now I'm just gonna cut off the excess length that I don't need from the zipper, leaving myself like three quarters of an inch to an inch, just enough to fold down and tuck. We're gonna do that straight stitch, and when it comes time to do the other side, again, you can either unzip it and just double check, or you can actually attach it and pin it while the zipper is still attached. This will ensure that obviously the zipper is going the right way, attached properly, and that the top and the bottom are evenly lined up because you can kind of double check that right away. And it's time to do our fold over, but not before we tuck our little tab. So again, before you fold it, you're gonna take it, you're gonna tuck it onto the back side of the zipper and then fold the elastic over it. So you fold it down, then you fold the elastic and it sandwiches it inside. So now all you need to do is pin it and you're gonna mirror the same stitch that you did on the other, you know, the beginning part right now. Double back at the beginning and the end so that everything is super strong and we're done. You just wanna trim off any excess threads and this sucker's ready to go. Okay, I wanna show you uh, first how I did it just for this sweater in order to crop it into a length that was more flattering. So this is a really great example. Um, these proportions are weird. Like, this is a funky, this is not working. It's just not cute, it looks weird, it makes me look short, no bueno. I could try to tuck it, but it's quite chunky. It's a lot, you know, on the side, it kind of creates that, not cute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the belt and I'm gonna put it just around my waist on the underneath side of my clothing. Now, you're gonna take the end of it and you're gonna tuck it underneath, like this. And it crops it. You can tuck it all the way around or you can leave part of it down. That's really a, a personal preference, how you want it to look. It's basically taking the place of putting it into my bra, which again, sometimes doesn't work. Sometimes you don't have a bra. Sometimes you're wearing like one of those comfy t-shirt bras and it's not strong enough to hold and it keeps falling out. So this is super strong. This is absolutely gonna hold it all day. Um, and it instantly changes the proportions into something that actually is flattering. I wanna show you another example. Um, same sweater, but a different sort of problem. I put it on with a dress, right? So number one issue is I can't access the bra underneath. All of these proportions are wrong. Nothing about this is flattering. Nothing about this makes me feel my style language. So first thing I'm gonna do is put the belt on. Let's say I wanted the, the sweater long and I wanted the skirt short. I'm gonna do it here in the mirror so I can see, but I would basically pull it like this. So I can adjust the length and the waist belt is strong enough that it's gonna hold it. I could leave it like that. That length was good. I still don't really enjoy that. I need self tanner. I created a asymmetric hem, longer in the back, shorter in the front, with the sneakers. I really need self tanner. And now I'm gonna crop it in like this get in the mirror and start playing with it until you start feeling like you're creating shapes and proportions that on your body is flattering. Everyone's body is different, everyone's height is different, everyone's everything is different. So you really wanna just kinda stand and look in the mirror and see what's feeling good to you until you've created proportions that feel flattering. I'm gonna do it on the outside of the clothing and for this one I'm gonna try the big one. I don't know if I'm gonna like the big one or the small one more. With this dress, it's a little costumey I think. I don't know if you're like pirate or wenchy. Let's try the small one. You can do it where the zipper is showing or you can do the zipper in the back. Just like a simple go on anything belt. It's great. A big chunky oversized sweater. I mean, this could be a dress, frankly. A little skirt underneath and you've got like this really, like it's not going anywhere. It's, all, <laughs> it's super strong. And again, you get to make it as tight as you want. And it's so comfortable. It feels like feels like a hug. All right, you know what? I think I'm gonna call it quits. I feel like you have gotten the idea now seeing how cool it is as an item to not only wear on the outside of your clothing to create cool structure and a cool sort of statement piece, but on the inside as a super functional styling tool. I highly recommend doing this. If you guys wanna unlock your personal style and learn more about a personal style that's designed just for you, I hope you check out mystylelanguage.com. The online course is so beautiful and so in depth. We do video check-ins every month, so like a video call where you get to ask questions and I can help you through it. I'm there with you the whole process. So it is really, really awesome and I cannot recommend it enough. 
Um, okay, I will see you next week for another fantastic DIY. Uh, have a beautiful week. Thanks for being here. I just wanna